Well, hello, and welcome back to module one of this Developing Digital Skills in Your Classroom uh, online MOOC from the European Schoolnet Academy. Uh, module one has got six parts. Uh, the first part was the introduction. The second part is what are digital skills? The third part, the future of work. The fourth part, jobs of the future. The fifth part, accessing jobs of the future. And the sixth part, future thinking. And this is the unit on what are digital skills? I guess before we start to look at the definition of what digital skills are, we also need a bit of an appreciation about why digital is so important. Fundamentally, technology, in particular digital technology, has changed the way that we go about our lives. From the way that we shop, increasingly people are doing more shopping online. From the way that we carry out financial transactions, gone are the days of the checkbook. Now most things are done either by online payments or indeed by mobile phone payments increasingly. Even the way that we play has started to significantly change. Even though young people still play outside, they increasingly play on computer games. And of course, it's not just the domain of young people, adults also do this as well. Even the way that we socialize has started to be influenced by technology. People still go out for a coffee or for a pint of beer, but increasingly they carry on these conversations using social media sites such as Facebook. And indeed, these social media sites allow us to keep in touch with people that we've not seen for a long time. The European Union, like many other agencies across the world, has recognised that the digital agenda is incredibly important. Hence the creation of the document, A Digital Agenda for Europe, a 2020 initiative. This document outlines a number of interesting statistics. For example, it suggests that 90% of jobs today in 2015 require some form of digital skills. It also highlights some of the shortages that we might have across Europe by 2020. For example, it's predicted that we might be short of 825,000 ICT professionals. And if that wasn't enough, it also predicts that we might be short of 215,000 e-leaders by 2020. So it's very, very clear that we need to do something about this, not just in terms of upskilling ourselves as teachers, but also making sure that young people have got the skill set that they need to enter a workforce which is going to be fit for 2015 and beyond. So what are digital skills? Well, it's actually surprisingly hard to define. Digitalskills.com, which is an initiative from the UK government, defines digital skills as basic digital skills or a minimum level of digital skills that you need in order to safely use digital technology to access the benefits that it can provide. It then also breaks this down a little bit more and it divides digital skills into a number of categories. The first category is around the digital skill of managing information. How do you find, manage and store digital information and content? The second skill is around communicating. How do you use digital technology to communicate, interact, collaborate, share and connect with other people? The fourth one is around transacting. How do we use digital technology to purchase and sell goods and services? organize your own finances, register for and use increasingly the government digital services. The fourth is around problem solving. How do we increase independence and confidence by solving problems using digital tools, but also using digital tools to find solutions? And the fifth one is around creating. How do we get people to engage with communities by creating digital content? And this notion of creating digital content is a particularly important thing for schools, I think. Of course, when we talk about digital skills, it would also be fair to say that we've got basic digital skills and advanced digital skills in each of these categories. Let's go back to that important category of creating again. It's very, very easy to create something using text online, for example, producing an online document, and we'll cover some of that during module three. It's a bit more complicated though to program something online using code. Hopefully you get the idea what I'm talking about here is that we've got digital skills, but some of these digital skills are basic and some of these will be advanced. And of course, as time moves on, these more advanced digital skills will be required by all people. Fundamentally, I guess what we're talking a little bit about here is not just digital skills, but also people gaining digital competence to exist in the place that they live and the place that they want to work. Digital competence is a set of knowledge, skills and attitudes that require when using ICT and digital media to perform tasks, to solve problems, to communicate, to manage information, 
to collaborate, to create and share content effectively online. And if we're looking to sort of display this as a simple model, ultimately what we mean is the more digital skills we have, the increased levels of digital competence that we have. So within Europe, we've also got something which is called the e-competence framework. And the e-competence framework is really aimed at business. And what this is designed to do is it provides 40 e-competencies that are required and applied to the information technology community workplace. Now, even though this is quite important, I think it's even more important for us to look at actually what might be relevant in the classroom. The website Mashable suggested 10 things that young people should be leaving school with um, in 2015. And these are the 10 things. One, the ability to set up a Wi-Fi network. Two, the ability to back up to the cloud. Three, basic photo editing. Four, basic video editing. Five, Google Docs and Microsoft Office. Six, HTML and basic coding. Seven, how to set up a website and a domain. Eight, converting file formats. Nine, online banking. And 10, how do you brand yourself in a digital community? Now, whether you agree with some of these things or not, it's important for us, I think, to think about digital skills. So a couple of reflective questions for you to think about before we move on to the next video. One, what digital skills do you think are important in 2015? Do you agree with the Mashable website? Two, what digital skills do you think will be important by 2030? Remember, that there's lots of support which is available, not just on social media, but also on the European Schoolnet Academy MOOC homepage as well. We'll see you in the next video.